Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar for today. We might just give it a couple of minutes and allow people to uh, join in just as we start to see the numbers click up. So if we can just give it a minute, I hope everybody is back and well and truly into the swing of things. Just seeing the numbers jump now. So um, yes, for anyone in Sydney, hopefully you'll get the chance to uh, get out and enjoy some of the sunshine today. Okay, so it's two minutes past, we might as well get started. So again, thanks for joining. And today we thought a really good topic to kick off the year is to talk about HR trends and strategies for 2023. As we all know, as HR people and culture or heads of employee experience, we have to ebb and change our strategies throughout the year and also reevaluate them at the kickoff of the year based on macroeconomic changes that could be happening, based on candidate and employee sentiment, and also, of course, based on and aligned to your own company values. So today we're going to talk about what we see as the 2023 trends for HR or people and culture. What should we be focusing on? How do you create a successful and long-term HR strategy based on these trends? And then finally, we want to look at HR software and technology as to how it can help you stay ahead of the rapidly changing landscape. And of course, the most exciting part, live Q&A. So what should we be focused on as we move into 2023? And by gosh, I cannot believe it's already February. Our concerns are currently dominated by skyrocketing inflation, which is occurring across the globe, economic instability, for example, in Southeast Asia, we're yet to see a recession. We have no idea or crystal ball to tell us if or when we may see one. And also climate change is a really big topic at the moment. So how are these three huge developments shaping how we should approach our HR strategies for 2023? So first and foremost, we see offering financial wellbeing initiatives as key to addressing the high inflation and the economic uncertainty. So financial pressure is affecting all of us, whether it's school fees going up, fuel and petrol, groceries, electricity, you name it. Now, large um, salary increases, which may have occurred last year, or you may be going through your cyclical round now at the beginning of the year, a lot of us as HR leaders and small businesses don't have the budget to be giving people large increases. And there is amongst younger generations, a bit of an expectation that we would increase their base salary in line with inflation. There are a lot of other ways though that you can help to make people's wages go further. You can subsidize health insurance. You can provide extra pension contributions. So you can add on to the government required superannuation, for example, in Australia, childcare subsidization, subsidizing physical and mental health memberships, even offering an employee um, assistance program might save someone money from having to go and see a psychologist. Subsidizing day-to-day -day expensaries, so groceries and petrol. Providing financial education. This one is huge. And we've found that our employees at Employment Hero really appreciate it when we hold sessions on how they can be budgeting better or helping their money go further or secure a house loan, for example, within that generation. Also, for when people are in the office, I know we're in a hybrid and remote world of work, but you can provide free coffee, lunch, um, in the office or even go off site. Or if you're remote, you could also be offering things such as Uber Eats vouchers so that you can have a virtual get together such as a virtual lunch. However, the company is still funding it. Also, we need to, as our second point here, be focused on employee engagement. And one of the hugest things here is through employee surveys and asking your employees for their actual feedback. Now, the most important thing on employee engagement, if you ask for feedback through a survey, is to read out the results and the action plans, even if they are, we heard you, 
unfortunately, due to the macroeconomic environment, we can't fund what you're requesting at the moment. So thank you for the feedback and hopefully in the future we can, but in the interim, we're going to look at, for example, a reward and recognition program. It doesn't have to be hugely expensive. You can do peer-to-peer -peer recognition, public acknowledgements of people at things, uh, forums such as an all hands or a global or regional gathering. You can give out trophies, values awards aligned to your values as a company. You can do team building activities. They are really seen as reward and recognition, as well as special lunches or dinners for high achievers. An example there might be a President's Club evening out with the CEO of the company and the head of revenue or chief of sales to really recognize your high achievers of 2022. Learning and development programs are huge for employee engagement. And all of our surveys last year done in 2022, particularly our remote world of work study, really showed that career development was in the top three desires for people looking for what they were looking for in their next job, but also a reason for leaving a current employer because they were not providing the L&D programs and career development needed. So you want to future-proof your business as well, and learning and development can do that. So invest in your team members. First of all, make sure your managers are trained on how to have career development discussions and making sure you're investing in those skill gaps to get your people promoted into new roles. A really great strategy, especially in this unknown economic environment, can be to promote someone and really show your confidence in them into an open, more senior role, invest with them growing on the job, and then backfill their role at the more junior level. You're really engaging your entire employees by doing that because you're showing a lot of focus on internal mobility and on those employees themselves. Our third strategy is to adopt really smart recruitment tools, otherwise known as an ATS or an applicant tracking system. So in order to be competitive in this world, we need to make sure our recruitment processes are smarter and faster. It really is competitive out there, especially in the Southeast Asian market across all of Southeast Asia. It's a candidate driven market at the moment. So you wanna have your EVP out there to attract the best people, but by through an ATS, you can really streamline the way that you assess candidates, how quickly and automated you are at getting back to every single candidate, even if they don't make it through to the next round. This is so important for your employer value proposition and your reputation as an employer. It also integrates with all of the major job boards. So with the press of a button, you can post your job ads on more than 1,500 job sites, and they all come into one centralized ATS system where your talent team or hiring managers can assess those applications. They can get back to those ones that they're not moving forward, and then they can get back to and automatically with a calendar integration, send out a meeting invite for a screening interview. You can then put feedback into that tool and you can tag a manager. So it goes straight through to the manager, automating the system. You've got no time delays. It's absolute ease of use. And I have to say, when I first started using an ATS system, it was life-changing both for recruitment as a process, but also for all of those hiring managers who are spending their valuable time interviewing their candidates. Our fourth strategy is to reduce the duration of the recruitment process. We did this around halfway through 2022, and it really made a massive impact on our time to hire for certain roles. So look at your recruitment process. Are there areas where you've got duplication? Have you got hiring managers asking the same questions? Are you using scorecards to make sure you're not asking the same questions. You need to make sure it's a great experience, especially in this virtual world where you're being invited into a candidate's home and they're being invited into yours as either a hiring manager or someone within a talent team. 
Um, and you need to also think through, is there a way to make it shorter? So for example, one of the things we used to do with sales interviews was we'd have two separate times where um, myself and our global head of sales would interview the candidate and then another time two team members, not for an interview, but so they could meet the team. So we joined that together for a one hour session where the two um, interviewers would be the, for the first 30 minutes, then the team members would jump in on the second 30 minutes. Hence, only needing one block of time for the candidate, making it a streamlined uh, process, as well as one that was really, really good for the candidate and also for the hiring managers and the team because they got input as well. So I'd love to start a poll. Have you looked at your hiring managers and have you assessed the steps in your recruitment process? That poll should be up there now. If you could vote, please, and then um, we'll give it a few minutes and bring up the results to let you know who's actually taken a step back at the beginning of this year or last year to really assess your recruitment process. Just give that one sec. And we might pull up the results in the background there if we can, Sophie. Oh, here we go. Fantastic. That was so fast. Love Zoom. So yes, a massive 59% of you have, which is fantastic. 31% have not and 10% are unsure. So for those who are unsure, go and ask your talent team um, to map out what the recruitment process looks like so that they can actually see it and you can kind of go through and say, no, we can eliminate this step or we can eliminate that step. And if you haven't, I definitely recommend that you do do it. So as you look at your recruitment process, these are the questions that you can ask. Could your screening be more effective? And could the number of interviews be reduced? So a standard scorecard, for example, that asks the same question of every candidate is hugely useful to your hiring managers to assess who they might want to take to the next interview. Which internal team members need to meet the candidate? Don't make it too arduous and too overwhelming for the candidates. Could more members of the team join one interview? Make sure that the candidate is going to be comfortable with this and that as um, having a panel interview, that each interviewer knows what they are digging into skills-wise. You might have someone digging into are they a value add in terms of culture and someone else digging into the technical skill set required to do the job. And really ask yourself, are you getting the essential information from the candidate early in the process? What are their pay expectations? You don't want to be having that conversation at the end, only to discover they are way out of budget and you can't offer them what they're after. What's their notice period? There's a big difference between three months and one month. And do they have the essential qualifications? So are you ticking all of those basic boxes? How quickly are you evaluating them and moving them to the next stage? This is really important, not just for the candidate experience, but also for your brand and your brand reputation. It's really important that you're getting back to people really quickly. I know on Monday mornings, my team are slammed in the talent team. However, it is their entire focus to be focused on getting through applications as quickly as possible. And are you asking people to do homework or a task. This can really put candidates off, especially if they're senior, because it takes them time. And if they're a high achiever, they're going to spend time doing it. So either make it an on the spot assignment where you might have a jam board and whiteboard over a problem and to, to understand their problem solving skills, for example, if they're in product or engineering, uh, using something like codeability if they are in engineering. Uh, and if they are a super senior position, you might say to them, I want a three, uh, three page. So you're limiting what they're presenting on what does your first 90 days look like? We've found that to be a really effective way to dig into senior, senior candidates. So fifth on our list in terms of approaching 2023 and really making sure us that you are successful is to look for what we would call cultural contribution or culture add, not culture fit. You're never going to maintain the culture of your company. It's always going to be evolving and growing. So you want someone that's going to add to that. So think outside the existing skills within the team. 
and also soft skills and EQ, emotional intelligence. Are there things that your team are missing where you can bring strengths from another candidate into the team? And be open and challenged within the interview process about new perspectives, because bringing someone external in really does bring a new view into your team, your OKRs, your prioritization, what you're working on. Always include a diversity statement on your job listings to make sure that you are seen and viewed as an inclusive employer. That is very important. And consider, consider opening up to other regions. We did this when COVID hit and we became a remote first business. I cannot even articulate in words how it opened up our talent pool. It was just incredible. More than that, it opened up opportunities for our existing employees who we at the time all thought had to be located in Sydney and come to the office. They had the opportunity to go and fulfill the dream of buying a four bedroom house three hours outside of Sydney because they no longer had to commute in every day to the Sydney office. And working remotely has huge benefits for your employer value proposition as well. And here's a great quote from someone on my team when you talk about diversity and making sure you think a little bit outside the box. So instead of only hiring similar people, you're weeding out diversity if you do that. And it's a natural human bias to actually hire someone like yourself. So companies that are more open to hiring different people who can add on to parts of the company culture, and then you're getting less kind of quote unquote group think, less yesing to everything and everyone agreeing and being on the same page because you're hiring similar people, you're actually getting a lot more diversity in thought, which is really important in the success of your business. Number six is all about corporate sustainability. At the beginning of this webinar, I talked about climate change being a really big topic of discussion, and I'm sure you all will have seen it uh, both last year and this year. So as a business, commit to sustainable practices. Make sure you are out there and very loud and proud in what you're doing and what you're doing in a conscious manner to be sustainable. Removing paperwork through using cloud-based systems. Setting up robust recycling programs for those of you that are in an office. Um, create an office policy or roster for turning off non-essential electronics in an office space. And swap physical goods or gifts that um, are using a lot of plastic and packaging for gift cards. The other great thing about this, um, not just being sustainable, it also means your employee can really choose what they want to use their money to purchase, helping their wages go further rather than assuming that they might want um, a bottle of wine, for example. Also, if you have the bandwidth, Create a corporate social responsibility group, which is abbreviated to a CSR group. So this would be an internal working group of volunteers. So you're asking for people to volunteer who are really passionate about sustainable policies and practices. And they'll also make suggestions for new actions and action planning and targets to make sure they're achieved and maintained. Also be mindful whenever you create a community or a group internally that you really need a senior executive sponsor for that group to ensure that things are signed off and things are actioned and people do feel that it is supported at a top company level. Number seven, and really something that's very close to my heart, is offering ongoing flexibility. As I've mentioned, it really adds to your EVP. We went remote first. We're now seeing a lot of businesses force people back into the office. In our own 2022 Remote Work Report Insights study, which we did late last year, hybrid working was actually identified by employees in every single region as the best work working model for work-life balance, for their own personal finances, which we've talked about, and for preventing climate change. They're traveling less, they're using less public transport, they're, you know, not buying coffee in a cup that they have to throw away, all of those types of things. There are a lot of ways to run a hybrid working model 
everyone does it differently. I don't believe any company has gotten it perfect, but we strongly recommend writing up guidelines about hybrid working. And we have remote first principles that we've written here at Employment Hero. One of them was really helpful and it took us a little while to learn. And that was if one person dials into a meeting, everybody dials in. So that if I'm dialing into a meeting from home and I don't, I'm not dialing into 10 people in a conference room, having in jokes where I feel left out and not included. It took us a little while to learn, but it's part of our, our remote first principles and we do live by those. Um, you also might want to set the amount of flexible days for the team. So we expect you in the office two days a week, for example. Half days. So um, that also helps with commute time. So you're allowing your employees to potentially do school drop-off or school pickup if they've got kids and not travel during peak commute times, which we all know can be a nightmare whether you're driving or you're on public transport. Another example could be someone who doesn't have kids and they're passionate about going to a yoga class for them. 4 p.m. works so they can go and commute at 3 p.m., go to their class and they will log on and catch up in their own time. That is, of course, contingent, mostly on being a knowledge worker and not having to be in customer facing hours. And as I've mentioned, a remote first approach to meetings. Whatever model looks best, again, I go back to asking your employees. I there relied on our 2022 remote work report, which we uh, poured a lot of um, resources into to make sure we got um, opinions from Australia, from New Zealand, from Singapore, Malaysia, the Philippines and the UK, all places where we had offices because we found a lot of studies were very US centric. We really wanted to understand the mindsets of those in Australia, New Zealand, Southeast Asia um, and the UK and that's what we got from that and identified flexibility and remote work as being absolutely key to engagement, your own financial um, stresses and prosperity, as well as helping to prevent climate change and also listening to your employees. So it shows that you are listening to them by providing this. So flexible working, as I mentioned, employees do view it as reducing their own personal costs. So across all global regions, again, relying on our own 2022 remote work report, more than 80% of our respondents would like to continue working remotely at least one day a week. My recommendation is you go further than that and you go fully remote and trust your employees. However, I would say at a minimum, let them work from home at two days a week and let them choose what day that is. Flexible working really does dramatically ease the financial burdens on your team. Public transport, after school care, before school care. For example, if you've got a 15 year old child who can not necessarily needs to be supervised to do their homework and you don't have to send them to after school care if you are working remotely. It can really make a difference to $100 a week to the family budget, even things such as buying lunch in the Sydney CBD is expensive, buying a coffee can be $5 or more, buying water, et cetera. So it really does help your employees make their wages go further. So how can you create successful HR strategies based on these 2023 HR trends? So first of all, let's look at the benefits of kind of taking a step back and creating these strategies. We often get stuck in the day to day. We're very busy. We often feel like we're very reactive because we are always responding to our employees and our management teams and our ELT. However, what it can do is really help you with forecasting talent requirements. So is it realistic? Are you going to be able to meet your OKRs, your company goals with the resources you have? And what are the needs now and in the future? It also helps you with succession planning and career development, because if you know how many more senior roles you need, you might know which employees are really doing a stellar job in their current role. And you can take that real leap of faith and promote them into the more senior role, thus going external to market for the more junior role as a backfill. You've also got non-compliant costs to deal with if you don't have a robust HR strategy. Everything from payroll to onboarding, performance management, employee data management comes at a huge amount of compliance and 
paperwork, as we know. So if you are a little bit more strategic and you can identify compliance gaps and keep your business in line with employment legislation, you are really really protecting your business. A really good example is the um, pay secrecy legislation that's coming in and also the domestic leave. If you weren't aware of those, you are uncompliant and you could be up for um, being fined. Also, you're going to have happy and productive employees. If you can show your employees that one, you've got an HR strategy, you are really showing them first and foremost that people are the most important asset to your business. Secondly, you can link up the HR strategy to your business strategy. So people understand how everything rolls up to your top company OKRs. And you should make sure you have a people and culture company level OKR to show your people that you care about their needs, that you're listening to them throughout their surveys and what they're telling you. Because otherwise it comes at the cost. If you're not checking on morale, engagement will go down, Productivity will go down, output will go down, and you will start to see attrition. Or what we were talking about last year, the great resignation where employees were just ceasing to work as um, productively and as at a high level as they could because they just weren't seeing um, employers giving back to them. Again, retention. If you don't have an HR strategy and a people strategy and a culture strategy out there, you're going to lose your employees because they're going to want to go to a company that cares about their people, that has career development path plans, that has learning and development, that has reward and recognition, even if it's not of one that has a huge budget peer-to-peer -peer recognition by way of example, based on your company values is really, really impactful. And continuous improvement. By having an HR strategy, you can evaluate your specific measurable outcomes. For example, do you have a target on employee turnover? Are you measuring it? Are you conducting exit interviews and looking at why people are leaving? If you might see a spike in a certain team, for example, of people leaving, is that due to the manager? Is it due to that team not having learning and development or career conversations? There's all sorts of reasons why people might be leaving. You also want to look at the number of vacant roles, times to fill, again, exit interviews or grievances, as well as satisfaction and dissatisfaction levels. And that would come from an employee engagement survey. So let's talk about what you can implement for a successful HR strategy. This is all about taking that proactive approach to managing your people to put your business on the front foot. So you're showing your leadership team that you've got a strategy that aligns to and rolls up to the overall company strategy that also aligns to the trends for 2023 within the HR industry. So what can you do now? What can you action on? I would start by doing an HR audit. So it's the perfect time. It's the beginning of the year. So look at your current people management processes, policies, and obligations, as well as current legislation changes. You'll be able to update anything that you need to, and you'll see where improvements can be made. So common areas to complete are compliance, are you keeping records, compensation, as well as benchmarking compensation, performance reviews and having a process in place, policies and procedures to make sure that they are within regulation and legislation, and also health, safety, and really importantly with remote work, security. You also need to set goals that align with your business strategy because you need to be able to articulate to your people how the people and cultural HR strategy is actually building up to the business strategy, to achieving what you're needing to achieve, either, even if it's as far as out as the end of Q1 because things change, or you may read out until the end of the year but then assess throughout the year. So if you're looking for um, a really great way to set goals, we use objectives and key results, better known as OKRs. If you want to download any resources, we have a lot under the resources section on our Employment Hero external facing website. So sometimes OKRs are not well known. Their other kind of known is 
key performance indicators or KPIs. KPIs are a bit more initiative or task led, whereas OKRs are a really great opportunity to stretch your team, to make them aspirational so that you're complementing your business aspirations with making sure your people strategy is also very aspirational. AK OKRs are not supposed to be 100% completed or achieved unless you're in a sales role where you've got a, a revenue target that you can that you get or you don't get and okrs are also a really great way to be transparent throughout the entire company so that the whole company can see where you are tracking as a company for example we have five company OKRs for 2023, all sponsored by one ELT team member. They are updated every um, second Thursday, so on a bi-weekly basis within our Employment Hero platform. Everyone can see where we might be red, um, which is, you know, off track, where we're um, amber, which is um, getting there, so almost there, and then green, which is on track or meeting. Now, you also need to be very purposeful about designing your employee experience. When it comes to you and your business, your employees really are your number one asset. They are the ones that kick the goals, that make things happen. They're the heart and soul of everything that you do as a company. They're also the heart and soul of your culture. As much as you might have values sitting there and you may have vision statements, you want your employees to be living and breathing the purpose and the values and behaving alongside those values all the time. So have you ever thought about even your own experience within your company? So you've got to look at the whole um, employee life cycle to be able to assess and design the employee experience. Everything from attracting, how are you going to attract and make your brand look the breast it is, to the candidate experience. That, that, that is their first interaction with your company. What's that look like? Then what does onboarding look like, especially in this virtual world of work? Are you having people go into an office or are you doing it virtually? And how are you displaying your company culture during the onboarding? Training and again, reward and recognition. Make sure that is a huge part of your employee experience. And feedback, asking employees through surveys for feedback on what you can do better and how they're feeling about things like career development. Are their managers having weekly one-on-ones with them? How engaged are they? When designing an employee experience, again, make sure you map out every single stage of the life cycle. Again, if you need some resources or templates, please go to our Employment Hero external facing website. We have plenty there. So how do you, when you look at the beginning of that employee experience, how do you improve your employee value proposition or employer value proposition? So it's all based around a balance of benefits, rewards, culture. What can you as a company offer a candidate and why would they want to work for you? So it's just so important to be displaying this on not just LinkedIn and Seek and Indeed. There are also websites like Glassdoor where you can ask your employees to leave reviews. You'd be really surprised at how many candidates are doing their homework these days before they even submit a job application. It used to be you'd do your homework after you were asked for an interview. Now you've got people even doing their homework on a, um, company culture and what would attract them to work there before they even submit um, a, an application. It also reduces your time to fill uh, in a lot because people don't have to go and do homework. Everything is sitting there for them, either on your website or also your life page on LinkedIn. When you get it right, you'll have star talent applying to work for you, which is really fantastic. Not just that, when they get the job, they are going to be so thrilled. They'll absolutely be a top performer and someone that lives your purpose, your vision, and is an overachiever. So what else can you do besides EVP? Providing professional development plans for everybody. It's a really important thing. And as um, I mentioned in our 2022 remote work survey, career development was really important. It came up in the top three items that everyone was looking for in a job they went to, or if their company was missing it, it was a reason for leaving. 
So if you've acquired top talent, you want to develop their skills even further. So make sure managers are having one-on-one -on -one career development conversations with their team members. If you need a template, again, go to our website. There are plenty of resources there. Trying to keep it online and off paper is also really great. So making sure you're storing it somewhere in the cloud where you can both access it and keep it confidential to the two of you. And improving employee advocacy. It's really important to leverage your employees when you're wanting to get your brand name out there. So you might incorporate it into your HR strategy. You might get your teams to put um, videos up on LinkedIn about their experience of interviewing with you, their career development um, journey with you. Videos are really popular and people on LinkedIn absolutely click on them. Also, uh, professional networks, meetups, a lot of them are still happening virtually. However, people that are out there representing your brand as a real advocate makes a massive difference to the attraction of talent and the overall happiness and engagement of your current employees. Social media is also a really, really cost-effective way to showcase your culture, both to candidates that might be applying but also as a reminder to your employees of what you're doing to invest in them. And that might be um, Instagram stories, you might do something on LinkedIn, or you may do something on your Facebook page as well. And again, videos are super popular when it comes to that. Today, we also really wanted to touch on HR software. How can it help you stay ahead of trends, formulate your strategy, and keep you on track? and make your life easier, essentially. Um, so the first one is amazing recruitment tools. I talked about an ATS, which is an applicant tracking system. So for example, on our system, we have an incredible ATS, which helps us recruit quicker, more effectively, efficiently, and it makes our hiring managers' lives a lot easier. It also really helps us to be sustainable because nothing is on paper. I remember back before COVID, hiring managers used to print resumes and go in and meet the person live, take notes, which was all fine. Um, it was still very personal, but now everything is cloud-based on this ATS, where I will have um, a candidate on this monitor, and then on my other monitor, I will have the ATS. I will let the candidate know that I'm taking notes as I'm interviewing, and that's completing a scorecard. I will then, um, at Ben Thompson, I've just finished interviewing um, Sophia. Here are her, her, her notes, pros, cons. My recommendation is move Sophia to next steps. Becomes really easy for Ben Thompson as the hiring manager to then tag me back and say, great, Alex, um, please have Esther set up an interview with me um, for Sophia. So again, saving time, making it super efficient. You can do it asynchronously, which means you don't have to have um, a, a two-way in-person conversation because even setting that up can be difficult. All on the cloud, so paperless. And also we do use Employment Hero as our technology to help our employees stay engaged, connected, feel recognized, and also to help them work asynchronously. So there you've got an example of David Thomas and his OKRs, which there it's due 30th of September, and it's to become a trusted advisor in the HR and payroll space. There you'll see he's actually... Uh, tracking, so he's amber, meaning he's not yet met, but he's on track at 37.5%. The entire company can see that. So again, transparency. Everyone knows what David Thomas is working on and everyone can see because there's an actual, when you click on it, you can see what company OKR that is aligned to. So people who want to know what he's working on know and they also know how it aligns precisely to the company OKR. We also conduct weekly one-on-ones using our system. There's a one-on-one -on -one template that is only visible to the manager and the employee. And that includes questions on updating OKRs. Do you have barriers that I can help you with? As well as a career development conversation to make sure you're focused on that. We do shout outs, reward and recognition, and that is about shouting out any employee for going above and beyond. And it takes five minutes 
in a remote world of work, as well as geographically dispersed workforce, this is just such a brilliant engagement tool. To be able to shout out someone like the marketing team, for example, after this webinar, I could put a shout out, a push notification would go to the entire company, thanking the um, heroes that helped me on this webinar. And it was fantastic. And whilst they're doing their job, they're getting public recognition for doing that. Also feedback, which I'll go through. Employee happiness surveys, so the ability to send out custom surveys. And again, objectives and key results, which is what I mentioned there. And a spotlight of a new feedback uh, tool and feature that we have in Employment Hero, which is 360 reviews. So you've got to make sure, first of all, that you implement these correctly. Feedback is really important to our own success in our careers. Imagine where you would be today if you had not been given feedback throughout your career. So it's a really important way to engage a team member. So there are many types of um, feedback mechanisms that you can use from a quick check-in to this, which is a 360 degree um, review. So it involves gathering feedback from multiple sources surrounding the employee. So you might ask the manager for feedback, you might ask team members or peers, and then you might also ask cross-functional people or stakeholders that work with that particular individual for feedback as well. That all culminates into one summary that you can then talk that employee through. And super important that you do talk to the employee about it because sometimes if feedback is candid or only in written format, it can come across as critical or harsh. I'm sure we've all been there before. It's never easy to hear harsh feedback, especially if you're reading it, sitting alone, working remotely by way of example. So make sure that you are talking through and allowing a two-way conversation where as a manager, you're, you're using coaching mechanisms. So we've been given this feedback. Try and talk through situation behavior impact. So um, from an observable perspective, if feedback is very, um, not critical, but very candid, you might say to the person, oh, Alex, do you remember a situation where you may have behaved not in line with our teamwork value, which is what this feedback is giving? Let's talk through that example and let's talk about how you can be more conscious of living our teamwork value and making sure you work in that manner. So the 360 reviews really provide um, a way for you to evaluate strengths so you can really reinforce the strengths and make sure you're using those strengths on a team level basis. So you might have someone have strengths in one area that will help bolster up another employee who might not be as strong in that area. It could even lead to a mentor relationship. Um, it also highlights areas for improvement. Again, you might peer them up with someone who has strengths like Someone might have a strength in teamwork. Someone else in your team has been given feedback about not being a team player. Join them up for coffee for some mentoring and coaching together. And you're really drawing out feedback and insights from all different perspectives by doing a 360 review. It makes your employees feel that the feedback is more rounded and objective. Wherever it's just the manager reviewing, they can sometimes feel it might be a bit top heavy and or one-sided. So would you believe that businesses who have implemented Employment Hero experienced a whopping 291% return on investment by the end of their first three years? So that is just an ROI statistic that blows my mind. It shouldn't because we use Employment Hero and it saves so much time and makes asynchronous communication a lot easier and holds us to account both as managers and employees. Perfect example. Weekly one-on-ones, you get a reminder, you've got a template in the system, it's all there ready to go to facilitate that discussion and make sure that there is accountability on both the manager and the employee's behalf. Integrating management learning systems is another really key method to engage your employees. Again, going back to career development and learning and development being in the top three reasons someone would choose a job. It also shows your team that you're investing in them. You help create a real culture of learning and what we like to call at Employment Hero, a growth mindset 
and curiosity. They are traits that we look for in every individual that we recruit at Employment Hero. It helps your retention rates in, in terms of keeping employees because they feel invested in. And most importantly, it does develop them. It allows them even through receiving 360 feedback to say, you know what, I need to work on X skill area. Let me go into my integrated learning system. We have Go One. They can go in there and look up any course to do with what they might be looking to improve on. Written communication skills might be one of them. In this remote world of work and across different time zones, we are working a lot more asynchronously. So written communications are really important. Um, we've discovered that a lot um, tone can come across a little bit too harsh. So that might be an area that someone could go on to go one to upskill themselves in making sure that their written communication skills are in line with our values at Employment Hero. And you can use an integrated learning system. Again, we use Go One for either soft skills or technical skills. So technical skills, you can get a certification in um, project management in PRINCE2, for example. And it also helps with soft skills such as communication and also emotional intelligence. They're two really big ones that are trending in 2023 as well as adaptability. That's another one, the ability to, to be able to adapt in um, environments that are a little bit ambiguous. You also need to be super focused on connecting employees located anywhere. This is so focused on inclusion and belonging. So cloud-based HR systems help shortcut to all things employment. So not only can I look up my own details, any manager can look up their team details without having to rely on coming through the HR team. It's all there to access for themselves, along with going and looking up someone's OKR. If you're about to have a one-on-one -on -one with someone or a, a coffee chat, you might want to look up what they're actually working on. Again, zero paper. So you are working in this great environment where you're not having filing cabinets everywhere and you are being um, climate and um, sustainable in the way you approach it. And also looking to broaden your skills-based hiring strategies and seek talent overseas. Remote work, we have seen a massive uptick in our talent pool because we now have the ability through Global Teams, which is a feature and a team within Employment Hero, where you can hire employees in 54 countries across the world, where Employment Hero becomes the employer of record and you become the host employer meaning you do not need to have an entity in the country where you're hiring this particular individual. You do not need to know how to pay them. You do not need to know legislation. A great example might be if you are looking at budgets, you might want to hire a role that doesn't need to be in time zone in a country um, where they are known for great customer service and uh, support, and that would be Manila. Now, you don't have an entity in Manila. It's actually really complex to set up. So you could use our global teams to hire your customer support people or uh, some finance people or analysts, data analysts in a country such as Manila. Again, 54 countries across the world. And even from my perspective, it's really opened up our pool of talent and our ability to hire the best talent anywhere in the world. You just have to be really conscious about making sure you're making them included and feeling belonged when it comes to introducing things such as all hands, company updates and reward and recognition. So this is a snapshot of some of the features where we help to keep our people connected and engaged and paperless. So applicant tracking system, you're saving time. And most importantly, you are making it super easy to have asynchronous communication with your hiring managers. We have digital contracts, no paper, and you can get a contract out in five minutes. It is so fantastic to make an offer to a candidate for a hiring manager to do that, then to ping and to be able to have a contract sent out to that person within five to 10 minutes. It's just such a great candidate experience to then have access to all paperless onboarding as soon as you get that contract straight into the system you can acknowledge all of your policies if you've got the time or you can wait until you start with the company 
leave management, all paperless, all online. I can look up my balance at any point in time. I can enter my leave at any point in time. Um, as an administrator, I can see where our company leave balance sits. And I can also help managers maybe understand where someone might be entering burnout if they have banked up too much leave and they should be saying to that person, you know what, Alex, it's time you took a break. I know you've been working really hard. You've got six weeks of annual leave banked. Can you please make sure you book something within the next two months? A really, really important lens for a manager to have on is that leave management balance and to make sure we don't allow our employees to get burnt out. Reward and recognition tools. There's just an example down there of how it comes through, sorry, both on our system as well as our, our mobile app. And that is recognizing employees as a values champion. You'll see there Amanda has been recognized by James Keegan. I think it's James, Jamie Keegan. Um, and thanking her for living that value, which is fantastic. Updated security protocols, so we have all digital HR policies and also a way to make sure we track who is acknowledging them to make sure we're compliant and that all of our employees in every single jurisdiction acknowledge all of the policies that they have to acknowledge as employees of Employment Hero. Goals and performance management, I mentioned OKRs. That is what we use. However, we have a goals module that you can use for OKRs or for KPIs. Again, transparent to the whole company, super easy to update. So before you're one-on-one -on -one with your employees or a manager and an employee, they're able to look at where those OKRs are tracking and really focus on the ones that are read rather than wasting time kind of ticking boxes and I guess making an employee feel like they're having to prove their job. Also certification and qualification storage is really fantastic, especially if you're working in an industry where you might require a certification, let's say hospitality, and you require an RSA for someone to be able to work uh, or a police check. We require police checks because of the, the data to access, access to data that our employees have. So that's automatic and gets reported out automatically and is self done by the employee with no onus on the manager or on HR. They have to upload their own certifications and they get reminders and admins get reminders for anyone who is not uh, compliant with their required certifications and qualifications. So to wrap up, we've gone through the trends and how you can stay competitive. So it's all about taking a step back and really building that great HR strategy. So think about how can you approach recruitment in a really intelligent manner, in a very, um, I guess, um, precise manner. How can you build a great culture? You need to think about this and you need to make sure all of leadership own building that great culture. Every single manager and every single employee is part of building that great culture. Employee well-being is really important and you can include that in your happiness surveys or your custom surveys to check in on how your employees are doing. Again, also looking at leave balances. Do you have employees who are not using leave and really should be taking a couple of weeks off because they're at that stage of burnout? And we've also talked about digital HR, back to that ROI statistic of a 291% return on investment after three years of using Employment Hero, which is just huge. It's the perfect time for you to get started. And we're here to help. So please use our resources and reach out um, to anyone. And if you would like a demo of our product, please do do that through the website. I will move to Q&A because we have time, which is great. So pay secrecy. This is from an anonymous attendee. Thank you. Are you referring to a requirement in Australia? Can you please clarify as we have listeners from other parts of the world, i.e. New Zealand? I was referring to Australia. Um, that's a piece of legislation that will be coming out very soon um, around no longer, um, even if it's in an employment contract, you no longer, your salary is no longer considered as quote unquote confidential. Um, Christina, we use Employment Hero. Um, we are just winding down also using Workable, which we used in the past um, before we um, did our own ATS system, which, by the way, we are reiterating on all the time. 
The next question, I've mentioned career development was one of the top three desires. What are the other two? Um, so the other two were um, financial stability, as well as flexibility and remote work, which I mentioned. And I think a lot of that comes down at the moment to employers are really trying to get people back to the office. You've even got the treasurer in New South Wales, um, Australia, for example, trying to get people back into the office to bolster the economy within the Sydney City CBD. Now, that that's not a holistic view because local um, areas are taking advantage of or getting the benefits of having lots of people working from home and grabbing coffees from their local coffee shops. So um, yeah, it's, it's just that flexibility of people wanting to have flexibility and work remotely when they do. Zoe, who sees the results of the 360 reviews? Is it just the managers or do colleagues? So it's the color, it's the person and the manager. If you choose to share it with um, the rest of the team, you certainly can. Um, but do not do that without the permission of the employee, please. Um, Jane, do your happiness surveys include industry benchmarks? They don't yet, Jane. Um, we are looking to include those, though. They are on the product roadmap. Um, I actually do do a Google search, and I was doing one um, last week to compare our recent engagement survey results. So you can find some good benchmarks that are just freely available on, um, on Google. Uh, Michelle, we integrate with um, KeyPay, which we acquired last year, um, and uh, we also white label that. So that's the payroll system that we use. Um, we do also integrate with Intuit um, in terms of um, uh, finance systems and Zero, MYOB, and all of the other um, small to medium business finance systems. Jennifer, can you contact EH API to other CRM like Visual Care app? Not yet, Jennifer. Um, due to security reasons, we're ISO 27K accredited. We don't have an open API at the moment. It is something we're looking into. How can we do that while still remaining very vigilant about our security and our focus on ensuring our data is um, very, very secure? Uh, another one from an anonymous attendee. What is the most effective way to strengthen your EVP? Oh, what a great question. There are so many ways. Um, I'd start off by asking your employees through a survey, what do they love about working there? Another really great thing we've done on LinkedIn, if you go on LinkedIn and you just look up Employment Hero, you'll see some videos that we've done. They're very natural um, of employees. It's either their career journey, why they were there or what they love about working there. Also, a really, really great one is to train up your hiring managers during the interview process because we do need to do a bit of a sell job. And so it's really great if they can share with the candidate what they love about working for your company. Why are they there? What did they, why did they join? And why are they still there? Those stories, those personal stories are so important to your EVP. Also, Asking people to put reviews on the glass door is really important. Obviously, don't ask everyone to do it on the same day. It's super obvious when you look on glass door and you've got 50 reviews all done on the 7th of February, 2023. So um, reach out to candidates, have your talent team reach out to them, you know, three or four months in and just say, would you mind um, placing a review on glass door if you feel comfortable? And it's anonymous anyway. Um, Chantilly, I hope you've, I've pronounced your name correctly. Do you feel that New Zealand will implement a similar pay secrecy policy soon? Um, always hard to tell. However, if you look at um, past legislation and circumstances, New Zealand and Australia are very, very closely aligned. So I would not be shocked at all um, to see that come through in New Zealand. Anonymous, can we find updates in employee policies in Employment Hero platform? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, they Everything within the platform should be up to date. We have um, employment lawyers through our sister company, Employment Innovations, constantly doing reviews and evaluations to make sure we are absolutely up to date. 
Lisa, do we have salary benchmarking information? We don't at the moment, Lisa, unfortunately. It is on our product roadmap. As you can imagine, it is super complex um, to implement and to do all of the research for benchmarking. If you're looking for an easy way to do it, um, I would be either on a Google Sheets or a spreadsheet by role, I would be keeping a track of when you're interviewing, let's say you're hiring for a junior product owner, I would be taking down what their current salary is and what they're looking for in terms of their offer because you're getting, that is like crucial live data that you're getting from actual candidates that are out there in the market. And Caroline, for OKRs in Employment Hero, is this similar to the SMART Goals format? Um, Caroline, a bit more complex than the SMART Goals because it's very much outcome focused. And sometimes when you look at an OKR, it can sound super high level, yet there can be 50 initiatives and tasks that go into actually getting to that output or that outcome. Um, so it might be getting to a certain annual recurring revenue number by the end of the year. So by the end of 2023, we're going to get to X million ARR. That might be the um, objective. You've then got key results under that, which is, you know, um, meeting certain things, certain marketing campaigns, et cetera, and they'll have to be measurable as well. The next one, do you provide staff pay parity information on the gender gap? Uh, no, we don't at the moment. Um, one of the reasons for that is we don't have a, a gap in terms of pay parity for gender at all at Employment Hero, I'm very proud to say. Uh, the next question, I know we're over time, so please drop off if you have to. I can go through a couple more. Um, what steps do you take to increase employee culture? Oh, so many steps. Um, starting off with employee engagement surveys so making sure you're listening to your employees and making sure you read out those results and action plan at the team level so having managers own those results and making sure you're listening to them about things they want like reward and recognition making their pay go faster remote work and flexibility and career development they're four of the things that we are really super focused on um, also values and being purpose driven people are wanting to work for companies that have a strong purpose and strong values so make sure you're designing your reward and recognition program around your values so that people see that publicly um, your employees are being rewarded and recognised based on your values. One of ours is own it. I've mentioned teamwork, but if someone is displaying own it, make sure you're screaming from the rooftops when someone really displays that value. The next one, do you have an ADP portal linkage with payroll system in Employment Hero? I will have to get back to you on that one. I don't believe we do just because we usually work with um, smaller businesses than those that would use ADP for finance. Um, I think we will have to leave it there just because we are on time. I'm just looking at how many more questions. We will try to get these questions answered and um, out to all of the attendees of the webinar today uh, to make sure that we are answering them. Really fantastic questions. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for your time. I know it's really valuable. I hope that you found the content and what we've spoken about today really useful as you approach 2023 and not just tackle your goals, but make sure you smash them as um, either small business owners, leaders, HR or people and culture. Uh, it's been a real pleasure um, to spend the hour with you and I look forward to seeing you soon at our next webinar and again we'll get these unanswered questions out to you. Thanks everybody. Bye.